the world of the unseen. In the unseen, and the unseen we only know through the Quran and the Sunnah. No person can know the unseen in his entirety except through the Quran and Sunnah. And we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been very merciful to us to tell us what is happening in the unseen. Belief in the unseen is a very fundamental characteristic of a Muslim. And that's why at the very beginning of the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, just after the opening Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the successful people. He says, this is the book in which there is no doubt, a guidance for those people who fear Allah. Those people are those who believe in the unseen. Indeed, this book, there is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about the Quran. There is no doubt about it. Every information that exists in the Quran, there is no doubt about it. La rayba fi. Hudan lil muttaqin. It is guidance to those that are pious, to those that have consciousness of Allah. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen, unknown. Part of believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is believing in everything that he has said in Al-Quran. Now the unseen is a very, very general word and it covers a lot of things. The very first thing belief in the unseen covers for a Muslim is belief in Allah. That is the biggest belief that we have. And it overrides everything else in the unseen world and in the seen world. Likewise, if you look at the pillars of, of Iman, the pillars of belief for a Muslim, and tu'mina billah, that you believe in Allah, and that you believe in the angels. We can't see the angels. And currently scientific thought doesn't hold the existence of the angels to be true. This is a matter of the unseen, a matter which we believe in firmly. We believe in these creatures which are angels that we can't see. We believe. We believe in Gabriel. We believe in Israfil, Mikael, Malak al Maut. So we believe in the angels. We believe in the day of resurrection. Our belief in the last day is from our belief in the unseen, that we will be resurrected after we die. Also part of our belief in the unseen are the jinns. There's a surah in Al-Quran which is called Surah Al-Jinn, the chapter of Al-Jinn. We believe. The word jinn in Arabic comes from a root word, jim nu nu, which means something that is hidden. Something that is concealed from the eyes, something that is hidden. It is an entity that is completely hidden from the eyes of men. We do not see them. They uh, are in a world that is beyond our physical world that we uh, inhabit. Both going to exist in this world, coexist in this world, but they're going to be able to see us, but we don't see them. What does Allah tell us about the jinn? What does our Prophet tell us about the jinn? Of the things we know about the jinn, is that they were created before men. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has told us, خُلِقَتْ الْمَلَائِكَ مِنْ نُور The malaika, they've been created from nur, from light. وَخُلِقَتْ الْجَانْ مِنْ نَار Jan, jinn, have been created from the fire. The jinns have been created from fire. And again, there are several ayats in the Quran to talk about the fact that they've been created from fire. Our essence comes from clay, from water, and from other elements. We've got a heavy material side to us. They've got a very light side to them. The essence is that they are, since they are of fire, they're able to fly, they're able to move around much more easily than ourselves. The Quran is very explicit. The Quran is very explicit that before we existed, the jinn existed. Before Allah created Adam, He had created the jinn. Allah says in the Quran, we created man from a type of hard clay, rock that had become rock solid that you could knock on it and it would reverberate. And the jan, the plural of jinn is jan. And the jan we had created before that from a nar, from a fire that is samum. Samum has been understood in two different ways. One meaning is that samum is a smokeless fire. It is the uh, a fire that is raw heat without any dukhan, without any smoke. And that is valid because the jinn don't have smoke. 
They are created from a fire that doesn't have an... Uh, we don't see the smoke. We don't see the ashes coming down. Right? So the jinn have been created from a smokeless fire. Ibn Abbas commented that the corner of the flames, that you have all the different colors, the red and the green and the blue and the orange and the yellow, it has all of these bizarre colors, very interesting colors. Ibn Abbas said that is what they were created from, the very ending of the uh, fire. The jinn are a type of created being. Just like Allah has created us and Allah has created the animals and Allah has created the birds and Allah has created the fish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created another type of being which are called the jinn. And something that is very peculiar or very special about this particular type of creation as opposed to all of the other animals is that like human beings, the jinn are an intelligent form of life. So they are not uh, like uh, wild animals that have no uh, intellect. They have intellect and they have free will. The jinns, they eat and drink and they get married and they have children like us. There is no difference. So they're very similar to human beings in many different ways. How did Allah create them from the flame? How did that flame form an intelligent being? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.